Think of the space race as a game of Jeopardy. The competitors can pick where they want to focus their efforts, and they don't necessarily need to go head-to-head -head at any time. They can win by sticking to their areas of expertise. Final Jeopardy, however, is when everyone has to answer the same question, and it can tip the scales towards any contestant. To put a man on the moon was the same thing. No matter how far behind you were, if you did that, you won. So when Kennedy announced the US's intention to achieve a manned moon landing, the Soviets had to respond in kind. Ultimately, the Soviets were unsuccessful, and the first man to walk on another celestial body was an American. The Soviet manned moon program was cancelled in 1976, but it wasn't until 1990 and Glasnost that any of this became public. To avoid embarrassment, the Soviets had covered up the program and its numerous failures. Had the mission gone ahead, it would have operated a lot like a cut-down Apollo mission. A crew of two cosmonauts would launch in a Soyuz sitting atop the most powerful rocket ever created, the N-1 booster. Just beneath the Soyuz would be the LK lander hidden in its fairing. The upper stage would propel the whole assembly into low lunar orbit, and once there, one of the cosmonauts would actually have to leave the Soyuz in a spacesuit and make his way to a hatch in the fairing and climb into the lander. The lander would shed its fairing, disconnect from the Soyuz, and descend to the lunar surface under the power of its main engine. Once there, the cosmonaut would have about four hours in which to explore the lunar surface, plant a flag, and pick up some samples, before climbing back into the lander for the rendezvous with the orbiting Soyuz mothership. Once they docked, the cosmonaut and the lander would exit it with the samples and board the Soyuz for the trip back to Earth and subsequent landing. In their rush to try and beat the Americans to the moon, the Soviets had to make their missions as lean as possible. Engineers and scientists were encouraged to cut corners at every opportunity to save both time and money. In doing so, safety features and reliability were entirely neglected. All three main components of the mission had some likely way of killing their crew that could have been easily fixed with time and funding. The lander had only one engine and tank, used for both moon landing and takeoff. If the pilot used too much fuel while landing, they would not have enough to leave and would be stranded on the lunar surface. The Soyuz of the time was experimental and dangerous for its crews. Soyuz 1, meant to test the docking mechanism in computer, ended in the death of Vladimir Komarov when its parachutes failed to deploy on re-entry. Everyone involved, including Komarov, knew the glaring problems in the Soyuz, but the Kremlin pushed on with its rushed timeline. The biggest problem, though, was the carrier rocket, the N-1, the most powerful rocket ever built. In an effort to save time and money, the N-1 used clusters of small engines rather than large engines like those used on the Saturn V. It must be said, though, that these were some of the best rocket engines ever made, but when 30 of them were clustered in the main stage with very complex plumbing fueling them, it would only take one failure to doom the whole rocket. All four launches of the N-1 resulted in huge explosions shortly after liftoff. The Soviets denied ever having a manned moon program once it became clear they would not succeed. After all, you can't lose if you were never racing. Billions of dollars worth of funding and the death of a cosmonaut were stricken from history until Glasnost brought the project to light. While the program itself was unsuccessful, it is survived by some of its infrastructure, design elements of such quality that many still serve to this day. Evolving from the unsafe, rushed craft that got Vladimir Komarov killed, the venerable Soyuz family of spacecraft continues to serve to this day. If imitation is indeed the sincerest form of flattery, then both China and India have chosen to flatter the Soyuz with either exact replicas or by stealing design elements. Today, the Soyuz and Shenzhou, China's knockoff, are the only craft launching crew to orbit. In total, this relic from the Soviet moon program has launched crew to orbit 134 times and isn't slated for replacement until 2021.